Chapter 7 Light on the Path of Renunciation The Glory of Renunciation Every religion has a band of anchorites who lead the life of seclusion and meditation. There are bhikkhus in Buddhism, fakirs in Mohammedanism, sophistic fakirs in Sufism, fathers and reverends in Christianity. The glory of a religion will be lost if there are no monks leading a life of renunciation and service to the world. It is these people that maintain the religions of the world. They give solace to the householders when they are in trouble and distress. They are the harbingers of peace and wisdom. They heal the sick, comfort the forlorn and bring help to the hopeless, joy to the, to the depressed, strength to the weak and knowledge to the ignorant. One true sannyasin can change the thought currents of the world for better. A real sannyasi is a mighty potentate of this earth. Sannyasins have done sublime work in the past. They are working wonders at present. One real sannyasin can change the destiny of the whole world. I dance in joy when I see or hear from an aspirant who entertains genuine devotion, aspiration and inclination for the path of renunciation and tries to get out of this quagmire of samsara. Through prayers and thought currents, I am in very close touch with such students and help them a lot. They are all attracted towards me and leave the world quickly with a great hope for the future. I welcome them with great joy and train them nicely in a variety of ways in the path of yoga and take care of them until they are able to stand firm in the path. Youth is the best period for renunciation. In scriptures, the order of sannyasa is mentioned for those who have passed the brahmacharya, grihastha and vanprastha stages of life. That means people took sannyasa in their old age on the verge of death. It is quite good to have some peace at the time of death. By this they may get a good birth. From experience I find that tremendous energy is needed for purposes of contemplation, clear vision and extraordinary purity of body, mind and heart. I consider youth with abundant energy and mental purity as the foremost qualification for the path of renunciation. I have all my admiration for those young brahmacharis who do not have any worldly bondage and entanglements. They can be molded nicely. Vivek, Vairagya, Shat Sampat and Mumukshatva are the primary qualifications to, to students prescribed by the scriptures. It will not be possible to have all the above qualifications when people live in worldly environments with heavy responsibilities, anxieties and worries. By the time they develop one virtue or try to remove a single defect or evil in the mind, they get entangled in various other directions. The vibrations of the materialistic world are not favorable for spiritual progress in the early stages. They have to spend their entire energy solely in resisting the temptations. Therefore, I prefer young persons. Necessary qualifications will come by themselves when they tread the path of, path of yoga in a favorable atmosphere. And when they live in the company of yogis in a place far away from the temptations and attraction of sense objects. No rigid conditions are attached. I heartily welcome all types of people. Old people can take bath in the holy Ganga and spend their time in prayers and bhajan and enjoy the benefits of satsanga. Young persons will evolve quickly through a dynamic sadhana and bring spiritual good to the world. If people only show some symptom of disgust for sensual enjoyment coupled with a taste for the path of yoga, I at once give them sannyasa and share with them what I have and encourage them to a great extent. It is a great surprise to see, to, uh, to many to see that I give initiation through post also. Some students who are not in a position to come to the Himalayas have taken sannyasa by receiving the sacred cloth and instructions by post. I cannot express their joy in full. They have made wonderful progress. I closely watch them. The entire voluntary donation I receive from devotees for my personal use is spent in providing comforts and conveniences to the students for their welfare and peace and in creating hundreds of avenues in which they can quickly evolve and help the world in a variety of ways. 
In my method of work for the spiritual uplift of mankind, I permit even married people to take to the path of renunciation and live like sannyasins. There are many who have taken to the order of sannyasa when they have a family and children. After some training here, they go back and live near the family or a little away and take care of the family with complete detachment and gloriously prosper in their sadhana. The point of my method is that I look to the motive and the inner purity of the seeker. I do not impose too many rules and restrictions on food and dress. External conformity to rules is not of, my, of much value. My students can live in any place in any dress and yet effectively follow my instructions. They all set an example to the whole world. Glory to the true ideal sannyasin who leads an exemplary life. This world is in need of ideal sannyasins who will serve the country and humanity with divine consciousness and disseminate true knowledge and carry the message of the sages and saints to every door. May sannyasins, the repositories of divine knowledge, the torch bearers of truth, the beacon lights of the world, the cornerstones of spiritual edifices and the central pillars of the eternal dharma or religion guide the nations of the world. Who are fit to be my disciples? Though I give much freedom and liberty in dress and external forms, I am very strict with my students with regard to the essentials. The rules prescribed by the order of sannyasa must be followed. Then only can they shine as ideal sannyasins. Comfortable sannyasa is very dangerous. They should not give lenience to the mind. Fashionable independent sannyasis are a menace to the society. The people in the world curse such sannyasins and treat them with disrespect, disrespect and contempt. They, however, exalted in the spiritual line, should not live in the company of women or householders and freely mix with others. Burning Vairagya with simple living and high thinking must be the ideal at every moment of their lives. No doubt renunciation is mental. That does not mean that you can do anything and live in any way you like. That will bring your downfall. Strive for perfection by following the traditional rules for discipline and control of mind and senses. Discipline in food and dress will naturally manifest itself if you have genuine vairagya and dispassion. External observance of the rules will help you to stick to the path. Maya works havoc. Maya deludes. Beware. Be cautious at every step and watch the vrittis of the mind. My disciples should have no superiority complex. They are not dry philosophers who spend all their time and energy in preaching alone. They have self-sacrifice and serve the world with their silent and intense sadhana. In the midst of intense service, they learn the way to revert the mind on the laksha. They are rooted in the idea the world is a long dream. Dirga Swapna. Perishable. Truth alone is real. For my students, there is no world. They perceive the divinity behind all names and forms. Purify the inner nature. Purify your mind. Develop sattvic qualities such as nobility, courage, magnanimity, generosity, love, straightforwardness, truthfulness. Eradicate all evil qualities such as lust, greed, anger, avarice, rag, advesha and other negative traits which stand in your way of ethical perfection and self-realization. Ethical perfection is a prerequisite to self-realization. No amount of practice can be of any value to the aspirant if he ignores the side of this side of sadhana. Love all. Prostrate yourself before everybody. Become humble. Talk loving, sweet, endearing words. Give up selfishness, pride, egoism, hypocrisy. Regenerate your lower nature. Find out through self-introspection if you want real freedom and liberation or you are just inquisitive about higher things or have a lurking desire for obtaining money, name and fame by exhibiting spiritual powers. Become sincere. All qualifications will come by themselves when you are in the company of evolved persons and live in an atmosphere charged with spiritual vibrations. Attitude towards women. My silent adorations and prostrations to all women who are manifestations of the Divine Mother Sakti or Kali. They are the backbone of society and upholders of religion. If they are inspired, the whole world will be inspired. There is a peculiar religious instinct in them. They have natural inborn divine qualities. In olden days, Hindu ladies also led the life of celibacy, served the rishis, meditated on the Atman, and obtained Brahmajan. In ancient days, there were many Siddhas, Brahmajanis, Vairagis, Bhaktas, and advanced yogis among women. By their purity and perfection, they could do miraculous things when there were occasions of for utilizing their spiritual power. 
there are instances of their giving life to the dead stopping the rising of the sun in the morning and of controlling the elements also even today you can find many women in rishikesh haridwar brindavan banaras and other holy places in india who have renounced the world and taken to the path of yoga i do not detest anybody i revere women as my own self i regard women as mother durga or divine mother women are dynamic forces on earth religion is sustained through their piety to passionate youths i have written a lot about the perishable nature of the physical body of women it is just to develop in them a strong vairagya and help control of their senses and mind though for the sake of inducing vairagya in men i have given a negative description of women i have great reverence for them i serve them i have done kirtans with them in various sankirtan sammelans in the punjab and the up many ladies come to the ashram from delhi and other places even if they get two or three days holidays they come in groups and join the daily satsanga and enjoy the peace and bliss and stay with the, within the ashram for days and weeks should women renounce the world no doubt it is difficult for young women to get on in the sanyasa line they do not have the same liberty and freedom as men men can live and move about in any way and sleep anywhere they can go from door to door for alms and maintain themselves but women are greatly at a disadvantage and suffer thereby it is a pity that there are not many ideal institutions in india exclusively for women where they can live peacefully serve the world and evolve ideal institutions with all comforts and conveniences for women who are spiritually inclined are a great need of the hour for ages this important work has been neglected i get letters from some sincere cultured ladies expressing a desire to tread the path of renunciation in 1936 i gave a reply to a devotee giving my helpful suggestions i cannot safely suggest any ashram where you can live peacefully and evolve you should get a decent amount from your parents invest in it in a bank you can lead a simple life with the interest you get from the deposit this is the best way even then live in an ashram where you can where you have advanced souls mahatmas or live with some elderly ladies of a religious temperament devote all your time to the study of the upanishads the gita and to sadhana specialize in kirtan and bhajan when you advance on the spiritual path you can go from village to village and elevate the masses and develop bhakti in them the world will worship you if you do so if this is not possible you can get a monthly allowance from your brother this will make you dependent on him and you will develop a leaning mentality you must be expecting his sympathy every month this is not safe if you are bent upon treading the path of renunciation but cannot manage independent means for your maintenance you can give private tuition to some girls their parents will support you in return i do not mean that you should become a qualified mistress of a school or a nurse that is worldly that will take away all your time and you cannot have strength or energy to do intense regular sadhana the temptations of the world will affect you in the long run vairagya will slowly vanish luxury and comforts will creep in you will miss the goal you will not be able to keep up the same mind and bhav as now if you lead a comfortable life and freely mix with worldly persons be adamant never change your mind have perfect trust in god service to women this mission of service to sincere women is very dear to my heart i do not have money i have no knack to collect money from the public from rajas and zamindars and businessmen i do not go out for collecting money in the name of service occasionally i receive a little money from devotees i spend this voluntary donation for the spiritual uplift of those who are around me and those who keep themselves in close touch with me from various centers my books are sold in large numbers in many parts of the world but don't uh, but i do not earn anything from the publications i lavishly give away my books free i do not know business for starting an institution purely for ladies i do not have resources or facilities at present some orthodox people and sanyasis say that women are not, are not fit for the path of renunciation my view is different they are they too are eligible to tread the path of yoga and renunciation Several times I have thought of concentrating more on rendering a real service to mankind by starting an ashram exclusively for ladies. That will be a boon to the world. In the absence of proper support from the world for an ideal institution exclusively for women, I have permitted many educated and cultured ladies to live in this ashram. 
I personally attend to their needs and train them in all branches of yoga, bhajans and kirtans. Many have learnt yoga exercises and derived incalculable benefits. Among them, there are many foreign countries also. I give them initiation into the order of sannyasa. After some training in the ashram, they go back to various centers and they continue their sadhana and service to the world. The Divine Life Society branches have ladies sections in all parts of the world, where they have ample scope not only for their own evolution but also for serving womankind. The ladies who stay in the ashram have, have all comforts and conveniences. They have all facilities, liberty and freedom. In the absence of a separate ashram exclusively for women, this institution has become an ideal center for their spiritual evolution. May they all prosper and enjoy peace and divine glory and splendor. To those who wish to take sannyasa. Many sincere seekers of truth in different parts of the world write to me very often expressing their eagerness to take to the path of renunciation or the order of sannyasa. From experience, I have found that many of those who renounce the world on account of the emotional type of airagya, which might have been induced special reason or other, eventually fail to keep up to the spirit of renunciation and consequently go back to the world or become a disgrace to the order of sannyasa. While to those who have genuine vairagya and burning aspiration, I recommend immediate renunciation. Others I advise as follows in order to give them ample opportunity to, to develop their vairagya and prepare themselves for the path. Worldly greatness is nothing, it is a child's play. You must become a great man in the spiritual field. Remain in the world, but be not worldly minded. Mere college study cannot make you great. When you remain in the world, prepare yourself nicely for the path of sannyasa. You have vairagya, but you have no experience in the line. I am ready to give you sannyasa at any moment. Suppose you remain with me as a sannyasi. You have got the strength to face your mother. Have you got the strength to face your mother, wife, sister and brothers when they weep bitterly with a broken heart in front of my kutir? Think well and decide this point. Destroy moha first. Occasionally go out and live in a secluded place for a month or two. Away from your family and then see if your mind often goes to your people, your property and native place. Test your mental strength. Mere emotion and enthusiasm will not serve you much in the path of renunciation. The path of sannyasa is beset with many difficulties, but it is full of joy and bliss and is smooth for the man of firm determination, patience and fortitude. The life of a sannyasi is the best kind of life in the world. A true sannyasi is the real monarch of the three worlds. Even a mere aspirant is an emperor of the three worlds. Have courage, be bold, realize that the world is a mere illusion, assert your real Satchidanan Swarup. Sit for a moment alone in a quiet room, inquire, cogitate and investigate, realize the glory of living in the Atman. Introspect, try to remove your defects and weaknesses. This is real sadhana. In the early stages of your life, do intense sadhana in seclusion and a little service to Mahatmas, the sick and the poor, as much as you can. Do not think of conducting classes on yoga and preaching and presiding over big conferences. Do not entertain the idea of a world tour and of becoming a world teacher. All such hopes will only result in a downfall. When you are young, do intense sadhana and have deep study. Forget the past and the future. Lord Jesus hid himself in solitude for several years. He came out for a period of three years to electrify and thrill the world with his spiritual powers and illumination. Empty bullets in the air cannot influence the birds. The words of a man who has no ethical and spiritual development will be like empty bullets. They cannot have any influence on worldly minds. Become a dynamic personality. Through pure thought, such sankalp, you can revolutionize the materialistic world. Do not be tempted by name and fame or comforts and conveniences. Lead a hard life. Combine service and meditation. There is one difficulty when you live in a jungle or a cave. As you are a neophyte, you do not know how to regulate your energy and adjust your daily routine and spend the time profitably. You do not know how to get over depression when it manifests itself. Beginners cannot spend all that 24 hours in meditation alone. They have to work in the beginning for purification of the heart as well. They should combine work and meditation. I have never come across people in all my experiences of this life who always remain in meditation entirely and who emerged from it with flying colors. What I want to emphasize is that beginners cannot fare well in seclusion. They become tamasic and lost their talents and hidden faculties after a long stay in seclusion. Financial Independence I have closely studied the lives of sannyasins and I have come to the definite conclusion that a little money helps the sadhaka in his sadhana and evolution. Financial independence will bring peace of mind and strength during the sadhana period. Downfall comes only when you try to augment the amount and to accumulate a bank balance. Yet if you have a strong power of endurance, 
patient fine health if your vairagya is intense and of a sustained type and if you are willing to do some selfless service to mankind you need not worry about money you can renounce the world even this moment it is not advisable to waste your precious precious life in trying to earn more and saving a lot there is plenty everywhere for sincere sadhakas leave the world quickly fly fly away from the company of worldly, worldly minded persons get away from the bustle of cities and the tumultuous world run quickly to solitary places like rishikesh you will be outside the danger zone good sadhus are well looked after everywhere it is only the beggars who come in the garb of mahatmas that become a nuisance to the public it is not easy for the public to differentiate mahatmas from beggars by a mere casual look but it is quite possible to find out real mahatmas from their talk walk and action these days shraddha is lacking among householders to avoid interruptions in sadhana i asked the students to keep enough money with them to meet their needs do not entertain the begging mentality if possible provide for basic bare necessities or join some ashram or religious institutions importance of service as a drastic measure to overcome the vicious nature and worldly samskara i asked the students to drown themselves in active service some for some months or years this enables them to forget the past entirely and devote their entire energy and time to spiritual pursuits they forget their body and surroundings they train their mind to behold automatically the hidden essence behind all names and forms they learn to keep a balanced state of mind under all conditions of life pleasant or painful the period of training varies according to the evolution and standard of the students in my method every student should learn cooking washing nursing serving the sadhus mahatmas and the sikh in all possible ways they must spend hours in deep study meditation japa and prayers even during work they should do mental japa they should learn to adjust and adapt themselves to various circumstances and persons they all must learn typewriting and first aid also they should learn bhajans and kirtans and must prepare fine essays and articles on yoga and vedanta i prescribe all the important items of sadhana for a quick spiritual evolution and give them all facilities and comforts when i find some progress in them i send them to some cool places for deep meditation sanyasins and politics in these days of political agitation even sanyasins are asked by political leaders to join the agitation it is a sad mistake these leaders have not understood the glory and significance of the life of pure nivritti marg these sanyasins purify the world even though they remain in the caves of the himalayas by their thought vibrations they help the world better my field is a spiritual path let the politicians and scientists work in their own fields it may be that you cannot separate politics from religion but different but different people should work in different fields according to their capacity and temperament all are important important and great in their own fields is guru indispensable only genuine thirsty aspirants know me aspirants need not be afraid of pitfalls and snares in the spiritual path the whole spiritual world is ready to back up sincere students who are trying to lift up their head from the quagmire of samsara aspirants should nourish their good samskaras through japa and regular meditation even in this materialistic age india is full of thirsty aspirants who want god and god alone who are ready to give up wealth family and children ruthlessly for the sake of god realization which they regard as the be all and end all of their existence this is a land of sages and saints thousands of seekers after truth are in close touch with me from all parts of the world Many foreigners come to India in search of yogis and mahatmas. Glory to India and all devotees. The spiritual path is beset with many obstacles. The guru who has already trodden the path will guide the aspirant safely and remove all sorts of obstacles and difficulties. A personal guru is therefore necessary. There is no more powerful way of overcoming the vicious nature and old samskaras in the aspirants than personal contact with and service to the guru. Guru's grace will in a mysterious manner enable the disciples to perceive the spiritual power within. Though it is impossible for the guru to point out god or brahman to be this or that. Initiation transforms the mind. Initiation diksha is not a mere change in outward forms. Real change of mind and clear vision and understanding come to the aspirant after the initiation by a brahma vidya guru. 
Many students, according to their own fancy, select their own method of sadhana without considering the consequences. Improper diet, wrong sadhana without a proper guide, hard and foolish austerities on a weak body, torturing the body in the name of tapasya, have entirely ruined many aspirants. Therefore, a personal guru is necessary to give timely instructions according to the change of seasons, circumstances and progress. The grace of a guru is necessary. That does not mean that the disciple should sit idle. A guru can clear the doubt, show the spiritual path best fitted to the aspirants and inspire them. The rest of the work will have to be done by the aspirants themselves. It is foolish to think that one can have all Siddhis, Sakik powers and Mukti from a drop of water from the Kamandalu of a Mahatma or a Yogi. There is no magic pill for attaining Samadhi. It is mere delusion to think so. First deserve then desire. To find out a guru who may sincerely look after the interests of his pupil is a difficult task in this world. It is quite true. But to find out a disciple who will act sincerely according to the instructions of his guru is also a very very difficult task. As disciples are arrogant, disobedient and self-filled in these days, no senior man in the spiritual path wishes to accept disciples for training. They bring only troubles to the guru. They do not want to carry out the instructions of the guru. They become gurus themselves in a few days. This problem of guru and disciples is indeed an embarrassing one. If you cannot find a first class type of guru, at least try to find out one who has been treading the path for some years who is compassionate and selfless and who will take a special interest in your welfare and progress. Realized souls are not rare. Ignorant worldly minded persons cannot easily recognize them. Only a few persons who are pure and have all virtues can understand realized souls. They alone will be benefited in their company. There is no use of running hither and thither in search of realized men. Even if the Lord Krishna remains with you, he cannot do anything for you unless you are fit to receive him. To serve God and Mammon at the same time is impossible. You will have to sacrifice one or the other. You cannot have light and darkness at the same time. If you want to enjoy spiritual bliss, you will have to renounce sensual pleasures. Mammon Mammon ka matlab hai dhan, wealth, sampada. Even if one of my disciples lifts up his head from the quagmire of samsara, I have justified my existence. The greatest service that I can do to humanity is training and molding aspirants. Every yogic student, when he is purified and elevated, becomes a center of spirituality. He will draw to himself through his magnetic aura thousands of baby souls for spiritual transformation and regeneration. Students who are in the world with responsibilities need not wait for obtaining a guru. They should select their own Ishta Devata and a mantra suitable to their taste and do sadhana and prayers. At the proper time a guru will appear to them. It is better to receive the mantra from a guru. The mantra received from the guru has a mysterious influence.